excited to get to know each one of our student athletes, our parents, our community, all the way from the high school down to the youth level. So please, if you see me, if we're at an event, something like that, introduce yourself. I'd love to get to know you and start our relationship building process from here on out. This is the quick agenda for tonight that I have. Quick is, is uh, we'll see. But um, these are the main things that we want to get through um, from the top to the bottom. So we'll get right into this and we'll get rolling. First things first, obviously our mission statement, you know, and it's really important that, that we establish this first and foremost so we know what we're going after. And then these five words to educate and empower through athletics is really our, our, our main goal. And that first piece, educate, that's obviously through academics. And, and academics will always be the number one most important top priority. There, will, there would no, be no high school athletics without high school academics. So that is our most important thing. The term student athlete it's for a reason. Student piece comes first, always followed by the athletic piece. The second part of the mission statement is, is to empower, and that's really to empower the development and the growth of our essential life skills and all our student athletes. And the four that you can see on this page right here, beginning with sportsmanship, is, is really a critical tool that I think is important through athletics. And sportsmanship to, to us and to me is the way that you play. And athletics is a privilege. It's respect in the game the coaches, your teammates, the environment, the spectators. We expect every single student athlete to play with great sportsmanship, and that's what Pembroke's really about. Next is commitment. And commitment is a life trait that's so important that athletics can really help you develop. It's committing to your team. It's committing to something that's bigger than yourself. And, and once that season starts, you're expected to be at every single practice and event from start to finish. The next one is accountability. And it's accountability for your decisions and actions. Once you put on that, that P, once you put on that uniform of Pembroke, you now represent the high school, your, your sport team, and, and the entire athletic program of Pembroke. So it's really important that we have a high level of accountability for all decisions and actions. And then the last one is integrity. And that's a hard, probably the hardest piece of all four of these. It's easy to say who you want to be and who you are but do you align with those actions and those decisions that you make? So integrity would be the last life skill, essential skill that really ties into our mission statement to educate and empower through athletics. Next here, uh, let, let's get into some, some big pieces for our fall registration. Um, it, th these are the main things, the vital things that we have to get done before any student athlete can start tryouts on Friday or play in any practices or games. First thing we have to register online, website simple. You guys can see it right there. Let's make sure we get that done online. And I appreciate the people who've already got this done. You don't have to worry about it. Next piece is physicals. And this is a non-negotiable. Um, they're valid for 13 months from the date of the exam, but it must be up to date. And we must have a copy here in the athletic office. Next is our athletic user fee. It's a one-time per year user fee. All fall sports fall into that $225 category. Um, there's also a family cap of $385. So please register online. Get your physical. If you have not, if, it, if it's not valid anymore, get that athletic user fee turned in here in the athletic office, and you can do that in terms of cash or check. The last piece, so you'll be eligible and prepared for Friday, will be impact testing. All our freshmen and junior student athletes are required to take these impact tests. And, and the great part about it this year is that testing can now be completed online. I believe that this has already been sent out to each person, but if it isn't, this is the website you can accomplish this at. That's impacttestonline.com slash schools. And that is our school password right underneath that that will allow you to complete this. Once you get to that final page, please make sure you hit submit, and then we should have that documentation that we need. So the big four, registration, user fees, physicals, and impact testing, those four are completed. Friday will not be an issue to start your sports season. Next piece on this, um, this is really a snapshot of what our tryout slash early practice schedule will look like. And obviously this starts on Friday, September 18th, this Friday coming up. I do want to make it clear that underneath – Boys soccer, for example, where it says sub varsity, the sub varsity, both the JV freshmen, the entire team will be going from five to seven on the turf. So it's not starting on Monday for sub varsity, the entire boys soccer roster, the entire girls soccer roster, the entire field hockey roster will all start their tryouts on Friday, September 18th. 
You can see the times on the times and locations on here accordingly. And, and we ask that we can really stick to these timelines. Um, the importance this year of getting athletes and teams on and off, whether it's the turf or their practice fields in a timely manner, will really allow us to separate and, and avoid any kind of intermingling from different sport teams. And that's really a goal uh, of this COVID type of season. So we ask you um, if you're dropping off, if you're picking up to be on time um, and, and once your practice and or tryout is over, please get off the field that you're on. So this is just a quick snapshot of, of the tryout slash practice schedule um, of really the next two weeks before we get into competitions. The next slide here is, is a game schedule. So through the Patriot League, we've been having a ton of meetings to try to iron this out. And you can look at the slide, don't memorize it, don't worry about that. But the importance of this slide is just to show that this is probably about 95% completed. So we're excited to get this thing on paper to get this done. The last few things we're working on sometimes at certain locations. And once this is completed, this will be available on our Pembroke Athletic um, High School website that you can access and also through an MIAA app that will be available if you're on your cell phone. So this schedule is about 95% completed. Like I said, it's waiting on a couple of times at locations and different events, but it's, it's almost 100% and we'll get that posted as soon as it's finally completed. Next, let's get into some policies. And, and these are Pembroke High School athletic policies. So these are, these are mandated, non-negotiable. And the first slide here is our attendance policies. So starting with school attendance, any student who is absent from school may not participate in any athletic event on that day unless an exception is granted from administration. You must be in school. And obviously this year, we understand there's a hybrid model. Some are remote. Um, and there's some differences with that. But we do expect you, if, you're, if, you're an in, if you have in-person school that day, to be in person, to be in school, to be on time. And the same goes if you're home on the hybrid. Um, follow your day protocol. Whatever times you have to check in with certain classes, uh, with certain teachers, whatever your protocol is for that day, we, we ask you to please follow that to the best you can, just like you would be normally on a five-day-a-week in person. Next, coming down here is to our sport attendance. Um, this kind of ties into our mission statement, our commitment factor. That prompt attendance is mandatory for all practices and meetings that are scheduled. That's from the first day of tryouts, which would be September 18th, most sports, and that's until the official end of your season. So once you once you sign up, once you commit to a roster and, and to a sport team, you are expected to be there for every practice meeting and competition. A few more here that I want to check off. Uh, the next piece is our transportation. Pembroke will provide transportation to all away contests. With that being said, due to COVID, there are some strong restrictions on the amount of student athletes that we can, can allow on each bus. And this year, that's going to be 23 people total. So that will be 22 student athletes, and that will be one coach. So with that being said, um, and th this next um, bullet point here is, is still to be approved, which I believe um, goes up for that next week. But we're going to allow, hopefully allow a waiver that parents and or, and or caregivers have the option of providing transportation to all away contests. And if that does get approved, we'll have a, a waiver that must be signed by the parent and or caregiver, as well as myself, the athletic director. And we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Obviously, number one, to help ease those transportation issues. You know, we, the, the more um, parents and caregivers that can drive to away contests will allow more student athletes to be at each event. But obviously, with the restriction of 22 athletes per bus, that's going to put us in some tight situations on how we can travel. But it is clear that student athletes cannot drive themselves. The two options are school provided or parent provided, hopefully to be approved next week. The next, the next thing I want to talk about is communication. And this is really between our parents and our coaches. Um, and just to make sure that we stay within the appropriate guidelines of what we should and should not dis discuss. So the appropriate issues are really about behavior, academic standing, or the mental health and well-being of your son or daughter. If you feel like there's something going on, an issue going on, and you need, you need to talk to the coach, please do that. Those are the appropriate issues. On the other side of that is the inappropriate issues. And those are about play call and strategy, um, or about other student athletes that are in the program. Those are inappropriate things to talk about with the coach and, and really should not happen. If there is something that you need to address, I ask you the first step is to privately talk to the sport coach that your son or daughter is playing on 
and do listen in an appropriate manner. Maybe you reach out via text, email, or phone call to set something up, but it's not appropriate to, to pull the coach aside at a practice or a game to address these issues. These manners should be addressed privately. If the step one does not resolve the issue, you guys can't come to a resolution, there's an ongoing problem, and then I can get involved, and hopefully from that point in time, we can address the issue, resolve it, and move forward. So those are four major policies that I wanted to address um, for a deeper dive, some more depthness, and, and some extra policies. You can go on to our athletics website, click on the athletic handbook. I'm not going to bore you to death with every single policy, but as a, a depth and quality of, of more policies on our website. The next piece is the MIAA, our governing body rules, and these apply for every school that high school that participates in Massachusetts. This is the MIA rule 62, the chemical health rule. I will read this fully to make sure that we, we have full clarity and nothing gets missed. So from the earliest fall practice date to the conclusion of the academic year or final athletic event, whichever is latest, a student shall not, regardless of quantity use, consume, possess, buy, sell, or give away any beverage containing alcohol, any tobacco product, which includes e-cigarettes and vape pens, marijuana, steroids, or any controlled substance. It is not a violation for a student to be in possession of a legally defined drug specifically prescribed for student's own use by his or her doctor. If this rule is violated, the first offense comes with a 25% contest suspension. If there's an additional offense, it will come with a 60% contest suspension. And the final piece here, this is a also a Patriot League rule is, is where this comes from. A student who has violated a chemical health rule is ineligible to serve as a captain for one full calendar year from the date of violation. So it, it's clear and concise that this is unacceptable at all times. The next major rule that I want to talk about is Rule 45, and that's the bona fide team member rule. Um, and I'll, I'll read these as well so they're clear. A bona fide member of the school team is a student who is consistently present for and actively participates in all high school team sessions, practices, tryouts, and competitions. Bona fide members of a school team are precluded from missing a high school practice or competition in order to participate in a non-school athletic activity or event in any sport recognized by the MIAA. A student cannot be given special treatment for non-school athletic programs. Any student that violates the standard is ineligible for the next two contests or two weeks, whichever is greater, immediately upon confirmation of the violation. So essentially what this says, if there's a, a game or a practice and, and the student athlete also participates in, a, say, an AAU league or a tournament or a game, they can't choose the AAU over their commitment to their high school team. So those are the two big rules, the chemical health rule and the bona fide team member rule. Next, moving forward, I know everyone is probably – very sick of hearing about COVID and the protocols and all those situations, but obviously at the forefront of all this is our student athlete health and well-being. So it's essential that we cover these. And the big three that we all know is social distance, face coverings, sanitization. These are essential at every practice, at every competition, when we travel. Those three really don't waver. Some additional changes in our sports season due to COVID will be our locker room modifications, our student athletes will have limited access to the locker room. It's really to change only. So we're going to limit these to about 10 minutes per team. There's going to be no equipment left in the locker rooms. So really just to change, get in, get out, and get ready for practice and or competition if need be. The next are practice modifications. And I'm not going to get into these in great detail. Um, I will leave these up to your sport coach. But every sport has had a change, whether it's soccer and you can't head, or it's volleyball and there's a COVID zone, uh, cross country and staggered starts. Every sport essentially has a modification and your sport coach will identify these and go over these with you guys. Next is our equipment modifications. This year, there's no shared athletic equipment. So if you have a field hockey stick, if you have, you're wearing a penny during practice, that is your equipment for that day only. That cannot be shared between you and your teammates. That is solely your possession. It cannot be shared. Excuse me. The next piece are no sharing of water bottles, towels, anything of that nature. If, if you need to bring a, an extra water bottle, bring an extra towel, but we can't share different athletes, that is solely yours for that day. And the last piece on here, if we have a symptomatic or positive case, um, whether it's 
the parents who find out first, that needs to be identified. If it's from Pembroke High School, a coach, that will be identified. But it's important that we have updated parents and or emergency contact information because if a situation does arise, that number, that emergency contact will be the first person that we get in, get in touch with. And I do want to make it um, clear that all our fall sport coaches have gone through a COVID-19 course, have been certified uh, from a, a social distance pr um, perspective, from a practice sanitization perspective. So they are aware of these situations and all our protocols are in compliance with all our governing bodies. Next, and this is some changes due to COVID as well this year. And this is really to allow sport to happen without some of these restrictions. It probably would not. The MIA is a, limiting our indoor events to 25 people maximum and our outdoor events to 25 people maximum. This does not include our athletes, our coaches, our officials, or people who work in those events. With that being said, this is what it comes with. For home events, this year we're going to work through a lanyard system. So the athlete will get one lanyard for themselves. They're going to get one lanyard to give out to, to someone in their family who wants to attend their games. For home events, this lanyard is essential to get in. There will be no entry without the lanyard. And really, that is going to allow us to make sure that we are allowing the correct people. Once we hit that 50 people max for an outdoor event, we can't let anyone else in. So as long as you have your lanyard, you'll be guaranteed access. But without a lanyard, we cannot guarantee access to any event. The next piece, away events, the Patriot League has voted on and, and made a, a league-wide rule. There will be no spectators for any away events. So no one from Pembroke can attend any game at Situate. No one from Situate can attend any game at Pembroke. And that is, once again, to allow these events to be maximized by the home spectators purely. And, and that's really a, a, a league-wide rule that it started to allow and limit and to make sure that these maximums don't go over. If you're a spectator at an event, please follow the COVID protocols, which are pretty ingrained by now, but that obviously in includes a face covering and the police social distance. And the last piece, there are no students or teachers who will be at the, the game day events as well unless they're working it. So there's some major changes on our spectators. I completely understand it. This draws probably some questions and frustrations, um, but really what it comes down to, these are league-wide and these to allow the student athletes to play their sport. Okay, next piece here is communication. If you guys want to take this information down, um, it's probably all readily available on our website if, if you have not seen it already. But this is my contact. That's my email, brian.phillips at pembroke12.org. That's my office number that you guys can contact me at any time. And like I said, I want to be accessible to you guys. So if something comes up, if you have a question, please feel free to ask me. We can work through these issues one step at a time. And then I want to make it clear that I think we're very prepared. I think we have a great plan in place and we're, we're preparing for a great fall season. But we need to keep in mind that at any point in time, uh, these things could change. So the importance of being fluid, of being flexible, and being ready to adapt and to adjust to what might come our way is going to be really a key factor to make sure this fall sports season can happen in, in the most pro proactive, progressive manner that it can. Okay, so from here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can – see you guys um and then from here if anyone has any questions hopefully i can answer some questions for you guys if there's anything that um that slide or that's on your mind that that, that has arose Let's see in the chat here i have a couple questions Any questions? Well, if we don't have any questions, um, I appreciate you guys taking your time out on a Wednesday night. Uh, if anything comes up in the meantime, please feel free to reach out via email, via office, uh, and I'll do my best to give you the best answers that I can at the time. Brian, I have a quick question. Um, if a student athlete had a impact testing in eighth grade, because of hockey, um, do they need it again? In they will. Grade? Yep. Every, every freshman and junior will, will need to make sure they have an impact test done. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Hey, hey Brian, I had a question. Uh, this is Mark Gallagher. Welcome to Pembroke, first of all. Thank you. Um, 
Our daughter's a field hockey player. As far as the no locker room and no lockers, from what I understand, what during the school day, other sports as well with the equipment that they need. What do they What do they do with them? Yeah, so and that's a that's a tough situation. But right now, we're just going to ask the um, the athlete to keep their equipment with them. Um, if they, you know, obviously as a freshman, so she's not driving. But if you know, front of classmen, they can leave their equipment with them at all times throughout the day. It's not an ideal situation, but at worst, it's going to be two days a week right now with the remote hybrid model in place. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Hi, Brian. I have a question also. Um, if I come to the game and I have a lanyard for myself, obviously, and I have I have a 14 month old, can I bring him with me? Yes, absolutely. And and that's that's the piece that that number from the MIAA in, in terms of spectators is is solid. But if we have spectators who are outside the fence doing things like that, I'm not going to go around and, and and eliminate people from the from the event. Um, oh. it's, it's within the within the the ramifications of the event is really most important for the lanyard and for for young children i'm not going to go around and, and count them as a as a spectator okay i appreciate it thanks yep i got a question here um what about spectators at the uh, hobblemock fields though those guidelines still apply you know and and i know it's going to be probably harder to regulate that over there but at any outdoor event um, that same 50 limit restriction is the number. Still, a lanyard will be needed for the events. Um, we're going to try to regulate that the best we can. But like I said, it, it, it comes down to, to these rules, regulations, and the guidelines. They're challenging, um, but they're for the student athletes. You know, we didn't we didn't make these, and it's it's, it's unfortunate that somebody's have to be in place. But at this point in time, that's that's what we're going by. have another one here. If I pay this, if I pay the sports fee, my son doesn't make the team. Do I get the sports fee back? Yes, we're not going to we're not going to um, deposit any user fees until the final rosters have been chosen. Next question. I completed my impact testing, but when I went to print it. My session froze and couldn't hit the submit button. How do I know if successfully submitted? Andrew, if you want to send me an email, I can go through our database and find out if um, the confirmation came through on our end. Next question. If the family member total doesn't get to 50, will other spectators, spectators be able to watch? Students watching their friends. Yeah, so this this can this will be a um, really a game to game kind of process. If 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 50 don't get there and we we see room for more, then we will allow um, to get to that 50 member, and that will cap it at that point. So that is a possibility that you could you could go with. Obviously, there's no guarantee of you getting to an event. Thanks, Katie. If you have any more questions, you can ask them or you can throw them in the chat and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Is it okay if the school nurse has the physical form? Um, that's a good question. Katie, If it would depend if Katie has received this or not yet. Uh, we can look to see if we have that form in our database. And if so, then that will be fine. I'm a goalie for field hockey and I'm unable to carry all my gear with me during school. Am I still able to get it dropped off after school? Yes, that's not an issue at all. If, if you wanna get your gear dropped off, that, that will not be an issue. Uh, we just have to do it in a timely manner um, in terms of that drop off. So that's not an issue. Will there be senior night? That I do not know yet. Um, we would obviously, we'll do something for our seniors within the MIAA regulations and, and guidelines. That has not 
from my knowledge, come out yet from the MIA, but I will be sure to highlight that and make sure that our seniors do get recognized in some form or fashion. Will they be playing a full 18 holes for all three sessions? I will leave that up to your golf coach, Coach Hall, to answer that question for you. He will have the plan for your practice. Physicals, they should be dropped off here to the athletic office, um, either to Katie or myself, and those have to be given either in person or via fax that cannot be emailed. With working parents and kids remote, will soccer practice times adjust as 2.45 p.m. might not be feasible? I would say no right now based off the time restrictions we have for each sport. We have limited field usage, obviously, with multiple, with multiple sports and athletes from both the high school and youth level. I think we're pretty bridging into some of these times. Um, so I would say for now that those are, those are solid. I'll give it one more minute here to see if any other questions come through. Has the process for facilities or field rental changed with your role? I don't know if it's changed because I don't know what it was before. So tough for me to answer that question. Jeremiah, if you want to reach out to me via email, I can hopefully get some more details on that for you. <laughs> Is the waiver a one-time sign for the season, or do we need to sign one each time we're able to drive a student athlete to a game? That's a good question, Dave. I, I want to, I'm going to propose to make it for the season, um, just to give us an exact count on how many buses we will need that would help ease that transportation issue. Like I said, this is going up to approval next um, on September 22nd, so we will see what comes with that. There'll also be an opportunity to have a a single day waiver if, if we need to if a situation arises but it is my hope that we can do one for the entire season to help give us an exact number next question if you drive your student to an away game you won't be able to attend the game and i know this is a unfortunate one but no you know and that's the patriot league rule you can you can sit in your car or you can you know be at the event potentially but you will not be able to go inside the event and that's i know it's a tough one but that's just where we're at currently. If a parent family member has a lanyard, can they attend away games? There are no spectators to any away games this year, so that will be non-permissible. Alrighty. Well, once again, oh, I have another one here real quick. During practice, kids will have backpacks with laptops. Will they be safe? So they will, each sport coach understands this. This will be a there'll be a dedicated area for sport equipment, for bags, etc. Um, so that will be at the field or really within the athletes and or coaches presence that entire time. Can a parent drive another kid and their child to a game? Yeah, so once again, um, Stephen, this will be part of the waiver. That would be um, something that I'm going to ask for to be able to drive um, your student, uh, your son or daughter, and another student athlete in the same team. Hopefully that gets approved because that's going to be what we ask for.
All righty. Well, hopefully you guys got some questions answered. Um, I appreciate your time. Reach out if I can help in any way. Really excited to get this high school sports going. Thanks, everybody.